Welcome, friends, to Tagged Up, the podcast all about video games and beer. I'm one of your hosts, Ben, here with Lucy. Hi, Ben. Hey. And? Hi. Adol. Hey, I'm awake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, it's episode weeks. 300. Low energy week. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's episode 394, <laughs> low energy week. Unlike last week, 393, where Adol had no energy at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Completely yeah. depleted. Yeah. 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 Which is, what's really strange is for years now, uh, for reasons we don't have to get into, uh, I, I don't normally, I'm not able to nap more than 25 minutes. Like, mm. I just wake up naturally. They're like, oh, I'll have a power nap before the recording because I know that'll work. That's the one week. I, I literally mean in 10 years, I haven't napped. I, like half hour is like a hard, my body mm. wakes up. The thing is, mm-hmm. I woke up kind of half. And so I was aware of things, but not quite coherent. So like I knew mm-hmm. I was aware. what is wrong with the world and it's like oh no that was my alarm going for at least five ten minutes before i cl- <laughs> was like oh right so like i was awake because i was hearing my alarm but i wasn't coherent and wasn't connecting yeah. the dots so i was this weird liminal space yeah well yeah. you're here now. i've been in that before mm. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah good um mm-hmm. let's open up some beers shall we uh, uh Adel, what are you starting with what have you got Ooh, for this evening? is a juicy one. Ooh. uh i saw it in the um I, I saw it and i just stared at it for a while i'm like this <laughs> what it is uh so it is um brew york's mm. is it Bre- guaylo collaboration mm-hmm. between brew, brew york and <laughs> the ginger beast by guaylo okay do you know what guaylo is no I do because in junior high in the 90s, I had a lot of uh, friends of Chinese descent and we used to go down to Chinatown uh, for like food and stuff at like lunchtime mm. or like after school at, like on a Thursday or Friday. And uh, as my friend uh, Gary really loved pointed out, pointing out, it was really interesting how all the old Chinese people would, would like suddenly start muttering when I came into the field of view. Mm. <laughs> Um, But one of the terms I learned at the time was Guai Lo. Uh, Let me just read you the flavor text. Um, Guai Lo, Cantonese term meaning ghost chap. Historical Cantonese slang term used to describe foreign settlers in Canton in the 16th century. Affectionate slang term used to describe foreigners in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Exceptional craft beer board in Hong Kong, brewed with talent, expertise, and above all, modesty. Phrase. You can take the Guaylo out of Hong Kong, Hong Kong, but you can't take Hong Kong out of the Guaylo. I have only sort of ever like... learned this as a <laughs> as a derogatory term, a derogatory rather, term. rather than uh, yes, uh, sort of like gai, gaijin in like Japanese. Yeah, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I've only ever I've heard it used only like never neutrally, like always mm-hmm. with like, like clear. So they've called the the. So this is a collaboration between, I thought, I was mistaken, obviously, because, like, it's the Ginger Beast by Guaylo. I just assumed Guaylo was, like, the one-off label of the beer, because surely ah. you wouldn't call the brewery that. That's insane. Yeah, mm. yeah, Gua- uh, Guaylo right. have got beers in, like, Sainsbury's. Uh, it's the first time I've bumped into them, but, like, mm. it's it's literally slang for foreign <laughs> white trash is how I was, like, <laughs> given to me, and I was like, what? So I had to buy it. So and also they're collabing with Brew York, so there's like a modicum of quality that I should expect. Yeah. But yeah, also Ginger Beast sounds interesting. Um, it is mm. a uh, five IBU, four point three percent, four forty mil can. I, I'm assuming. Uh, where are we here? Um, it doesn't actually give me clear ingredients. Oh, there they are. No, just allergens. Oh, there mm. it is. Sorry. So that was the name of the brewery. Now we have our take on a classic alcoholic ginger beer with an Asian twist. We had lashings of ginger with layers of citrus and a blend of spices. This is then fermented right down to balance the flavors with a crisp, dry finish. So yeah, I was expecting a ginger beer type okay, thing nice. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with a racist. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I've also got a collaboration beer. I don't think there's anything racist about this. Um, well, we'll, we'll see. But um, uh, it's a very different beer for me. It's the Fruits of the Forest Meringue and Lemon Curd Sour. Uh, because as we've done for the last few weeks, we've been sort of lowish alcohol. Uh, mm. no alcohol and i know the beer industry or someone coined the moniker triannuary as well um to try and get people drinking different things as well as not just mm -hmm. alcohol. so i thought i'd do something different this week but this is um collaboration between new bristol brewery and vault city and um, there's a little bit of flavor text um the taste is dessert heaven the additions are raspberry blackberry red currant lemon zest and vanilla and it says it's sharp, tangy berries and zesty lemon curd balances perfectly with the vanilla sweetness of the meringue. Tasty stuff. Uh, does it tell me? Because normally it tells me what the hops are in that little, you know, not as additions as such. It tells me what the hops mm -hmm. are usually with New Bristol. Uh, but it doesn't on this one. Uh, but that's the, that's the beer. Uh, Lucy, mm. what are you drinking tonight? It's that time of year when oh, yes. putty is out. Oh yes. Yes. So putty from Verdant. Um, their 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 design this year is uh, it's interesting. It looks like uh, my intestines. Um, just <laughs> more like the puffed marshmallow man, just cut into pieces and squashed into the squashed boot down. of a mafia car. Mm, yeah, mm. ready to be buried. Um, yeah, it's a uh, eight percent double IPA. It's got Azaka, Galaxy, and Mosaic hops in it. Uh, I can't remember if the hops changed year to year. I imagine so. But yeah, it's their it's their putty, their their their, which has become a staple. Yeah, um, yeah. It's like late January. Mm. They they put it on tap so throughout the throughout the country and yep. yeah. So. Um, as every year, always forget what the previous years was like. <laughs> so, like, but, I mean, uh, we, we all drank it last year, I think. Or was um, it the year before? Who knows? Because was it last year or the year before they brought out putty with the with the with the triple T, which is a slightly bigger right. beer Ooh. as well. Oh, Couldn't that... tell you. No, no, could I? Someone will find yeah. out. <laughs> Um, so if I can't even remember what we drank last year, there's no way I'm going to remember what that tasted like. So, uh, yes, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Uh, cool. We'll roll back round. Adam, uh, how is the beer? Uh, it is. It smells um, kind of sweet, gingery, almost like um, kind of like the. I don't know if you ever had that like crystal ginger tea you sometimes get in like uh, Chinese restaurants. Hmm. Can't say I'm familiar. Oh, mm, looks, really looks, looks a little thin. It's quite thin. It poured as almost no head. Mm. It might be. Yeah, I'm not sure. If... I mean, it poured with some, um, but it's very flat. Um... I mean, literally had some ginger beer last night because uh, my current housemate likes it. Mm. Right out with dinner. Um, this is not as fiery as, like, uh, Tesco's ginger beer. Okay. Which, a bit disappointing, because that's not exactly a super gingery thing. <laughs> um, it's got a light sweetness that's got almost, um, like a light honeydew sweetness. Just the roundness of the honeydew sweetness. Right. Not quite as, not as, like, in-your-face sweet, but just like that, like, it's more melon than... And a little more sweet than cantaloupe, I guess. Mm. Um, just on the finish. Yeah, I mean, this tastes like something between ginger beer and ginger tea. Okay. Um, and then it's got a f ever so slightly, like I said, light light fruit and a bit of a bitter finish to remind you that it's kind of beer. Mm -hmm. That's what I will say. And you can take the something, something, and kind of beer <laughs> claim on its face. Um, maybe it'll grow a bit on me. I have to also preface this that I had the um, Northern Alchemy uh, Flying Gang um, collab 10.5% Broken Face Gingerbread Impy Stout. Uh, a third of that at the pub. And then I also had... The Dea Chelt Vegas 12.5% impy stout, mm. third of that at the oh, um, pub. So it might be that my palate is just 
I'm expecting richer flavors than than this can deliver. Mm. Um, so mm-hmm. we'll see. Uh, this is definitely because of that. I'll I'll, I'll try and chime in before uh, when I'm done to see yeah. if it, I got used to it as the other flavors in my palate sort of. Mm. Cool. I Good like idea. your I like your local bar just going absolutely ham on like the the really strong beers rather than the no alcohol and low alcohol beers. Mm. Yep. That, like, that is. Nope. Like... Yeah. So he I... even put wine on tap for the first time as oh, well. Wow. Like, oh, right, Daniel, right? <laughs> Fuck you! Uh, oh, um, Kyle, uh, admin, um, he, 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 Ben politely was like, ah, can I be on your podcast? I'm like, oh. yes, yes, you can. Ooh. We'll find a day. So in, yeah. in the coming weeks, we'll, we'll have to find a, a, a week that makes sense to bring, uh, because hmm. he closes the bar at eight. Right. Thursday. Okay. So it's actually <laughs> like, and it's door to door three minutes, less than oh. three minutes. So like, definitely could Brilliant. easily have him on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Home. Sounds good. Mm. Good, good. Anyway, no more inside boy- baseball. That's the <laughs> Guaylo ginger beer beast. It's less beast, some ginger. Fair. Fair. Yeah. Um, cool. The new Bristol Bolt City collab then. It, it's very red. Oh, as you can see, mm. incredibly red. Um, it's. It has got a very sharp nose. I know it said in there there's sort of like zesty lemon and there's going to be a bit of sharpness to it, but the, the nose is quite sharp. Um, much more in the sort of the berry uh, um, flavours on those nose. So more raspberry, I think, than, than anything, but a sharpness to it. Was it raspberries that were in this? Blackberries? Raspberries, blackberries, red currants, lemon zest and vanilla. Not getting much of vanilla on the nose mm. um, I think the berries kind of take over from that but it's almost a little bit I don't know like it's it's not quite edging on that refresher bar type of kind of smell you know that, that kind of like mixed fruit very zesty very sort of citrus but it's getting there very very much getting there a little bit of sweetness but It's got a little bit of body to it. It's not like super thick. Um, but it's kind of, you're getting those nice sweet fruits straight off the bat. That's kind of the initial flavor. And it, they don't really go anywhere. Like I'm expecting them to kind of mellow mm. out a little bit and then allow that slightly more zesty, maybe that little bit more kind of vanilla flavor to kind of come in but they don't go anywhere the other flavors just kind of come up to meet them so Mm. there's a lot of flavor in this beer which you know it's a collaboration it's already new bristol but it's also a collaboration with all city so you're gonna expect it's gonna be full of flavor and Mm. that's why it's it's a bit shocking to me but say that again that's why it's a bit shocking to me that it isn't just like even too much flavor. Well, no, it's not. Like, it's not too much flavor. It's kind of. It, it's sort of. It that's starts how I'd off. expect it to tilt. Rather yeah. than too much rather than too less. You know. Well, um, it's it's nice that it's not reserved because it's not a reserved mm-hmm. beer at all. But it's got and it hits you with those lovely sort of sweeter fruits. It just then allows everything else to come up and join that. So the, 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 there is right. that little bit of lemon and that comes up to sort of get into the fold as well. It's not that the the fruit flavors disappear and those other okay. things sort of take over it's just that that fruit flavor is constant throughout and everything else just comes up to sort of meet it and you're left okay. with a, a a finish which is or well, feels at least a little kind of uh, uh not again not edging towards sort of pastry but it's got that little bit of sort of sweetness at the end which isn't quite fruit it's not kind of anything that I can quite pick out and the vanilla sort of kicks in the zesty sort of lemon finds its way in as well that does round it out to make it feel a bit more kind of like fruit I know it's it's like a meringue lemon curd meringue and lemon curd sour but I would put this more it feels more like it's a bit of a cheesecake uh, um, like a really fruity sort of cheesecake instead, you know, with with a little bit of pastry, a little bit of vanilla in there as well. Um, that's kind of how it feels as a finished sort of flavour. Mm-hmm. But it just it hits you constantly as you sort of drink it. You're like, this is it's just it's very very good. Oh, that's good to hear. And it's you know 
in a, in a way that it's not too not too sour either because yeah. I can you know I'm not puckering my lips at all it's not kind of hitting my tongue and setting me back at all I, I can take two three big sips of this as I'm drinking and it not really hit me too much there's a little bit of a, a more sort of sour feel kind of towards the back of my mouth but that's that's it really mm -hmm. um, it's just very very fruit full mm. as a flavor um which is great this is this is yeah yeah, yeah vault city are pretty good at towing the line between making sours but also having them approachable for people who yes. don't want that overly sour taste and leaning a bit more into the fruit so yeah so, yeah. yeah. Oh, I haven't had a, like mm. a just a straight up Vault City for ages. I don't have to. No, it's been three years for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so there's one to two regularly at the Holy Grail. Mm. Um. So, in fact, I had their sixteen point five percent gingerbread something or other. God, that thing was gorgeous. The stout um, again. Stout. Yeah. Mm. Um. A couple days ago, uh, I have a tin of it. I. If I hadn't had those two strong thirds before this, I was going to have that ten. But I was like, I think that's just too many beers, my dude. I'm, I'm like, maybe. I, I, maybe. My ankle on was limping last week, and then I caught a cold, and I'm like, I, I don't need to tax my body anymore than I already. Yeah, ease it in, ease it in over time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Lucy, we'll come to you then for the putty. Yeah, mm, the putty, uh, just a solid oh. block of color, mm. going orange. Um, smells. Delightful, like guava, mango, mm, just tropical, tropical essence. Mm. Um, maybe, maybe a bit of passion fruit as well. Okay. Ooh. And yeah, all those, uh, all those aromas definitely carry through to the taste. Um, mm. It is a unapologetically fruit forward beer um yeah and it's got the body to you know just elevate those like like almost fruit juice like flavors um super easy though even Good. though it's got a substantial body it's it's really it's really smooth uh on the palate and just goes down very easily um yeah tons of tons of that fruit like i think the overwhelming taste i'm probably getting is like guava and mm. it's and it's really 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 nice um so is it, it got a bit of a uh not kind of sourness to it but is it, it kind of not sort of you know totally sweet fruits it's a bit more sort of kind of earthy a bit more sort of stone fruit yeah. in it yeah I was I was just about to say yeah, the at the end of the finish uh, the overwhelming um, aftertaste is sort of like a a powdery resininess oh. almost um, uh, a bit piney um, mm. and yeah the bitterness definitely comes to the fore at the very end um, so yeah very fruit forward at the start of the taste and then um, it starts to feel a bit more like a beer rather than a just simply fruit juice um, yeah. towards the end, just rounding things out and um, making it actually really well balanced. Um, oh, I mean, it is. It isn't something that you should not back because it is. <laughs> it is a bit dense. It's still a bit dense. It's smooth, but it's it, the body still makes it a tiny bit dense. But mm. just the just the flavors. It's not that you're. You know, you're wanting more flavour um, as it just sits on your on your palate and in the aftertaste. It's more that you just want more of that flavour. It's like it's like how sugar is addicting. You know, mm, the amount of sugar mm. in this is probably probably going to send you into yeah. a diabetic coma. I'm just just but, thinking um, the same thing from more. mine as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's interesting that beers don't put uh, that kind of Ooh. stuff. You know, beers haven't oh, yet had yeah. to put like a traffic light system on. Um, yeah, mm. if they did, I'd probably go cold turkey. Cause 
cheese. <laughs> That's probably <laughs> one beer is sixty percent of your sugar intake for the yeah. for, for the day, the week. You know what? I, th- I think it'd be good. They really should because it, you know. It certainly stopped me from picking up a second beer, maybe for the <laughs> evening. You know, um, work this into your macros. But just like, yeah. Um, maybe it would put too many people off, though. Probably, yeah. <laughs> this beer is 900 calories because it's <laughs> imperial pastry stout. Uh, yeah. Like, well, that's my dinner then. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Liquid dinner. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. Um, you know, I, I I don't think they are trying to one up themselves each year. I think they just put out a pretty decent mm. beer, and it it doesn't need to one up itself because it's just a very good beer. It's like throwback to you know when Cloudwater were making insanely mm. uh, fruit forward IPAs, and this seems like, especially with you know alcohol tax and stuff like that, we're seeing not the death of but a decline of double ipas um you know just they're out there but there's not Hmm. as many i'd probably say um so yeah it's nice gosh in the dystopian future when there's only four percent beers and it's all (laughs) carly maybe this will very much become a throwback but um but yeah it just it just feels like something that's has a place in time in my memory Mm -hmm. and just Mm -hmm. you know fills that void sometimes when i want to really juicy f- fruit forward um ipa that still does the beer things like the bitterness and the the pininess and you know mm. still does that um pretty well um i'd say uh, the the double ipa that i know that you've had a deal the dale one um mm. the the strata one yeah that, that had that was it last week and that's just also a very good Isn't beer it? but mm. um i think this might Top it. Um, yeah. Which which strata was it? Um, it, what's it called? Like uh, something in strata. It's just the the the, the double IPA one from Dale, right. the eight percent one. Um, I mean it's a good beer, but also from what I recall of the putties, also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason why it sells out within. What was it like? 20 minutes yeah yeah i, I don't know or at least 20 minutes later it was sold out let's was it say that, that quick one. wow yeah. um yeah i mean if i was it, there's no way you know you could probably knock back more than one of these in a night yeah unless you're a bit crazy um <laughs> just because not even the alcohol the whole content it's just very full it's more mm. full than i realized it initially um if I was drinking multiples of a beer, I'd definitely go for the Strata from day on. Okay. Yeah. It's a bit it's a bit lighter on the palate and maybe in the body as well. But mm-hmm. yeah. Putty, once again, very good. Nice. Very good. Nice. Mm-hmm. I know it's um going on tap tomorrow at mm-hmm. uh small bar. One of the one of the only places oh, nice. in Bristol that is going to the the, the they've got it. Um I and obviously places like bottles. Mm. Well, I went I went I go to Small Bar. Not long ago. A couple of weeks ago. Um, and um, I think bottles and books uh, are getting cans in as well. Um, so once I see, you know, the bottle shop getting them, uh, I take a little trip over and, and mm. pick one up. Um, nice. Just yeah, I've got five more to get through. <laughs> oh, you bought a six pack? <laughs> yeah, I think Ooh. it was only offering six packs. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. Sure, yeah. yeah. But, yeah so. I'll tell you about putty every week. Next week, tell us about uh, how much you like your third to seventh putty. And I mean that. <laughs> it might we cold, be. We that. cold putty. <laughs> yeah. So if it's any different. Yeah. Um, good. Let's enjoy these then and talk about some games. Um, I think from our conversation just before the episode, we haven't got a huge amount to cover this week um adult lucy i imagine things are kind of as as standard work job applications life just being super busy that you haven't had the time yeah, or compunction to, to fit gaming in yeah yeah it's, it's, yeah. it's done me over today mm. <laughs> so yeah. i'm just yeah. about hanging on <laughs> last week uh, so i run three courses for the university mm-hmm. Like I'm a module convener. Um, one of those courses I'm the only staff member on. Um, the other I'm handing off, and the other was the, is the big master's course. All of them had summatives due last week. 
Right. Yes, that I am saying I run three courses and I somehow chose to have all three of due dates in the same week. I didn't have that much control, but that just like this this is this is the marking peak of the year if I didn't have the stupid marking boycott crap at the beginning of the year yes, that yeah. made me mark for ten days straight. But it does mean that um after literally in in less than three weeks i have to be done all that marking mm. but also and then and then i don't i just have the one course on my plate because i've handed off another to our new staff member who joined the one course is done so i can that's when i plan on like creating a work-life balance type thing <laughs> where i plan like oh I, uh you know unicorn <laughs> Work I mean, life mostly balance. like with, with, when, without peak workloads, I can figure out how to schedule in downtime because I mm -hmm. haven't been, mm -hmm. and it's really important. Even if I just wanted to be a successful cog in the university machine, I need the downtime, and part mm -hmm. of that will be yeah. playing games. Um, yeah. So, uh, one of the things about all the work I've been doing about ADHD and scaffolding and structures is that's I know I need to do that. Yeah, turns out like when I lived in Bristol the first time, I used to host movie nights and and same thing in Amsterdam where I hosted a double feature every Wednesday and that mm. was like oh I will be social for at least four hours probably six um a week wow. and numbers, I will man. just watch shit so I can just zone out if I need to mm. oh it turns out that was like entirely me like having a coping mechanism to give me myself balance mm -hmm. in the ways that I struggle with and so I just need to figure out what the Durham version of those things are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Going to the... Yeah, I know I, I haven't played any video games. <laughs> 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 the answer to that question. <laughs> One way of saying it, yeah. Uh, I, I guess I, I, I've been watching, uh, when I can, AGDQ. Oh, yeah. Uh, the speedrunning event. I saw oh, nice. a, a dog speedrun um, a game, so that was fun. Hmm. Wait, what? Um, the dog played Gyromite. He has, like, these little... These, these, like, uh, little buttons on this, like, oh, one pad on the hands? floor. Yeah, well, not quite a mat. It was more of a. It looked like you know when you have um, uh, a footrest, um, but it was made out of buttons, oh. <laughs> like slightly on an incline. But yes, the dog played uh, a game. He was a very good boy, and it's probably he... the highlight of my week. Did, 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 the, did dog the dog play? Play. <laughs> the, the, the dog won. Our hearts. He didn't get a, <laughs> a, a, a personal, uh, personal best or a world record, but he did finish the game. Oh, wow! And the dog concentrated for like twenty-seven minutes straight, which is more than I can concentrate on anything. You also That's like. That's gonna be GG when you. You literally. The dog name is Peanut Butter. Peanut, How do you bury butter, the yeah. lead? Peanut mm. Butter the dog. Yes. <laughs> It was very wholesome. It was, it was it was very good. But I mean the whole of AGDQ is always very wholesome. But, yeah. Um, you know. It's oh, a it's, dog. A, it's a Shiba Inu if you care. Yeah. Just yeah. see how cute this thing mm -hmm. is. Oh, he's, he was shit. so good. He was so good and he was so well behaved and managed to concentrate for a long time and I mean that's maybe why I can't get a job. Dog is better in life than me. <laughs> I would hire the dog over me. <laughs> like 20, I can't concentrate for 27 minutes. No. Uh -huh. no. Dog can press buttons. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> the dog just expects treats, whereas dog, I expect, you know, you know a just, big salary yeah. <laughs> to press buttons. Just to buttons. be clear, this dog uh, beat Gyromite's B game mode mm -hmm. in 26 minutes, 24 seconds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he messed up um, a couple of times, but you know that. that but like, understandable, it, and it was. Um, I, I think there might have been a it, controller it, issue, and there was something that was like RNG that no one had ever seen before. He did a good job. But also, its previous record was twenty-five minutes twenty-nine seconds. Um, and the ac the actual record by humans is twenty-four minutes thirty-nine seconds. So it's a minute <laughs> off of humans. Well, well, the original was played with like Rob the Robot, so that's why it took so long. But yes, um, he's smarter oh, really? than probably ninety-nine percent of the humans on Earth. So yeah, 
Brilliant. I mean, <laughs> which isn't hard to do. Well, but... to we welcome, we welcome <laughs> our new dog overlords. Oh yeah, they'd do such a much better job. <laughs> much better job. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's great. That. <laughs> If you're not playing games, watch a dog play. Them. I mean, it makes sense. Why would you want to watch humans do it? I, okay, I want to see a dog play on Alan Wake too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, both of yours reactions was well worth me saying this. Dumb, it just, dumb, it just, as soon as the scary bit comes, it just runs away and hides behind the sofa. Just it's gone. Like, no, not playing that anymore. Sorry. The camera just freezes. Aiming into a corner. Adil won't be happy. He won't be impressed until a dog can play Alan Wake 2. Like, my my new threshold for game is if a dog can't play it, why should I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder if there's dog reviews on YouTube for games. Um, one out of ten couldn't play. Too complicated. Mm. Um, I yeah. think in the next cross, then, they need to introduce a video <laughs> game car- uh, category. I mean... Like in the Olympics or something like that. Yeah, and just with video games. Play Pong Crust. against each other. I mean, we know what the, the thumbs down review is. It's just rough. We. Hi. <laughs> um, shall I talk about some games? Oh, talk about some games that I have played. Um, the first one, um, oh. which I will very quickly just talk to, uh, is the. I, I don't even know what the full name is. It's the new Prince of Persia game, the two D, like the two D one, Crown? something like that. Yeah, yeah um, but I played the demo, and my initial impressions are the demo was far too short mm-hmm. to get a good sense of that, the, like the full game. Let's say mm-hmm. you know, it gives you an initial taste of yeah. kind of traversal, the, the the sort of the Metroidvania style kind of map. Um, there's lots of areas that were blocked off whether I need abilities to come back and, and open those up or I need some kind of thing to, to, to yeah. uh, you know a certain kind of attack or something to be able to open those up um, I don't know whether it is a true Metroid uh, uh, sort of style game in that sort of sense mm-hmm. uh, but it, it, it definitely feels like a 2D Prince of Persia for modern audiences you know it's not yeah. the sort of the heavier um kind of you know uh, uh um solid jump kind of uh prince of persia's of old uh in a 2d sort of vein it's very floaty it's very quick the movement of the character is really really quick and there's yeah. the kind of a dodge mechanic and lots of the you know his attacks are very fluid and it flows very very well in the kind of the combos as you're doing various attacks and things and it feels really good as just to move around the space to kind of fight the standard sort of enemies um it feels good it feels a bit hard there's a lot of times where i'm like cool i can dodge here and you don't you think you can kind of dodge but you mm-hmm. just get clipped by an attack uh, um, those kind of hitboxes feel a bit big for the character where you think you're being quick you think you're getting out of the way but actually you just mistimed it or, or the timing needs to be just a little more precise for dodging out or or, or, or kind of um is there a parry maybe there's a parry i can't remember i've literally um, started it now just to because um yeah i i need some impetus and i want to for someone who is uh sick in the head and likes metrovanias i believe that my discerning taste and palate mm. which uh is way more discerning than yours but <laughs> will be able to tell if this is a a good metrovania or a b bad metro fair fair no absolutely do that absolutely do it you won't spend long with it i imagine the demo right. was like 15 minutes or something like that maybe oh, 20 right. minutes okay. um and there's a little bit of, of of exploration you can kind of see some of the pathing as you move around areas and you can double back mm-hmm. and open up other paths uh, um there's like lifts to take you to different areas and things like that mm-hmm. but i progressed through quite quickly and got to the boss right. which triggered the end of the demo you don't get to fight the boss you just see the boss and then it takes you into a 30 second uh, um, sort of super cut of, um, you know, of the game um, mm-hmm. to sort of try and sell it to you. Um, 
But okay, it seems like you may be able to juggle enemies. Yes, you can juggle enemies. Yes. Good game. Um, so you can, <laughs> you know, you can jump and sort of attack down or attack up. Um, or shoot arrows. Into shoot them. arrows into enemies. Yeah. Uh, um, you can't shoot through solid uh, floors or walls and things, but there are platforms which enemies are stood on, which you can shoot through. Um, there are a few flying enemies and things like that, so it gives a little bit of variety. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, in that sort of short demo as well as to kind of how you can approach different enemies and it gives you maybe th four maybe five different enemy types to kind of encounter as well in that mm -hmm. first sort of section um, my only fear would be that it's um, quite short you know again I was right. sort of 10-15 minutes to get to that first boss and that's fine you know a 10 sort of 15 minute section of a level to get to a boss is great but if it's only got like four bosses five bosses you, you you're spending an hour and a half with the game you know maybe twice that for unlocking everything exploring all of the areas maybe there's optional bosses and things like that but um mm -hmm. it feels and you kind of want from a prince of persia game just a little bit or you know in that metroidvania sort of style Something like Guacamole is maybe mm. like six to eight hours, something like that. Yeah. And that seemed, Guacamole felt like a really good length for a game. You know, for the progression that you're getting, the different abilities to go back to areas to, you know, either get more unlocks or extend your life or get to mm. other areas and progress the game. Um, something like uh, um, Hollow Knight was much longer than that or at least it felt much longer yeah. than that i don't know how long uh, uh um it was probably, but well on your first playthrough you're probably spending like 20 25 yeah um yeah, yeah. Uh, um it just again from my initial thought of the demo prince of persia feels like it's probably more in that sort of six to eight hour really kind of category um but uh, the I've, I've, out, haven't they because uh, yeah it must it's, it's, coming out this week it is this week is it is it tomorrow or is it come out already um i don't imagine it would only be have already. prince of Games that persia lost crown um how long to beat there we go let's see six hours oh no oh, really? that's no 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 sorry i read the i read the number six um <laughs> This is from uh, um, from a, a wiki's guide. It was how many? Yeah, people. Before. How many people polled was six? Um, but yeah, seventeen hours. Uh, the main story and extras twenty hours. Completionist nearly thirty hours. Um, that's why I like so it. it's yeah, that's there we go. There we go. Good. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad that that's. Uh, um, I mean, so... this is a problem with demos, right? Like, if if, if demos are there, demos are the the best approximation to a trailer trailers to movies demos sure. to games because they're still interactive mm. um but they're much harder to master so a bad trailer can of a movie can still give you a sense of a movie even if the vibe's kind of off because it's poorly cut right or it gives too much away and all yep. those things um a demo needs to be because it's interactive medium and the length of time it is portraying for example 20 20 to 30 hours is so much longer if you have a short demo that like makes it seem kind of meh slash like oh there's like a few mechanics and it's kind of thin no no one's mo the average person's not going to look up to how long to beat and as we've learned over the past like five plus years there's no guarantee in length and even in triple like even from triple a studios so like your demo could do your huge disservice instead of being a sales pitch right like yeah I, I, okay i I'm, i have to say this uh in, in the demo you this is like really good this feature and i wish it was in other metroidvanias i've just got to a you know, a uh, bit where it's tutorializing stuff, and mm -hmm. it's called a, a memory shard, where you oh, can basically yes, take, sure. uh, basically take a picture of the environment. Yeah. Uh, so, basically, when you're coming back, it's like, oh, 
I remember that chest is up there and I'd probably need a double jump or a, uh, you know, a, some kind of suit on something like Metroid. But anyway, um, that's really good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm sold. <laughs> 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 just just that mechanic alone. Um, remembering where to... Because, yeah, that's a issue with some Metroidvanias. It's like, oh yeah, where was that thing again? Um... You know, I'm gonna have to look at the intricacies of the map. It's like, no, you can just add markers to the map and uh, create a visual prompt. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Just for that alone, I, I, I think uh, I might be sold. Nice. To be nice. honest, all I have to do is open the map and see that lovely kind of design. That yeah, yeah, kind of design. It's like, yeah, okay. okay. So this is again. I think it's off Montpellier. So this mm. is the. France, French, French studio, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, this just matters with respect to Ubisoft being um, Ubisoft. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The the I mean, other, I think the other thing the demo may do a bit of a disservice to is that uh, um, for areas and for parts of it, it feels quite sparse. So you'll get to an mm -hmm. area, you'll kill like two or three enemies, and then you'll run through three or four screens without encountering anything. Um, mm -hmm. It just shows you a bit of environment, shows you a little mm -hmm. bit, not even platforming, just run. And you get to the next space. So um, whether they'll be more sparse <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> um, whether it's more popular because I'm pretty sure no, really, you know yeah. uh, is the, rather than it being like a vertical slice, I think it's like a curated section. So it's like mm. this is part of the game, but we've we've just curated it a little bit, and yeah. so you we've we've you know we've blocked off areas and all of that sort of stuff, so you can't just like go through and ex mm -hmm. fully explore um, kind of everything. So whether they've taken enemies and out and things like that as well, and it's just made it a little bit more sparse than than the main game will be um, as well is something to think about or something to consider. Um, and maybe it's just yeah. worth watching the first sort of thirty minutes of someone else play if you're on the fence about it as well, just to mm -hmm. sort of see. Uh, uh, and what the main game kind of looks like but i enjoyed i enjoyed it um i mistakenly thought it was about 45 quid um but i think yeah. that must be a, like a extended edition limited edition uh, collector's edition skins. special edition whatever <laughs> yeah version of it uh, uh, lee as we were talking about earlier said it's actually 25 quid um oh, no. so yeah 25 quid still 20 or 30 hours That's yeah not bad. yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah, they should make more Metroidvanias. Every company. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Um, it did. It, it, make it, me happy. it gave me a little bit of um, sort of Ori vibes as well um and i think that's more down to the color palette um yeah. uh, and just the sort of the way that it looks than than anything else um because yeah. it is you know it's obviously much more combat heavy mm -hmm. um than just sort of yeah. platforming and, and, and exploration yeah. and stuff so um, the parries are uh seems quite forgiving and mm. good you know some some games are just too uh challenging with the parries and it's like come on man um, too small a window, so yeah, this seems good. It seems like, yeah, and lots of accessibility options at the start. If yes. You look into them, but it seems like you can toggle the difficulty uh, to your skill level. Which yeah, is good. absolutely. Okay. Mm. Good, good. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. J just uh, mm. on the global scale, um, it's not available on Steam because of oh, Ubisoft's. Oh, and, yeah. Um, so yeah, Ubisoft yeah. has, like, sided with epic in the sense of we have the uplay store no one cares about it but some people still buy shit on there um but uh ubisoft now pretty much takes over a year um to release stuff oh, wow. on steam compared so they basically are now because epic has the 20 percent versus 30 percent dev right so mm. it's available on the epic game store for price um but it's not available um, on Steam, uh, and we don't know when, but Far Cry 6, for example, um, came out on Steam 17 months after its launch wow. on a 75% discount. So it just came in like, hey, Steam users, you want to own this thing? It, it, we're blowing it out because like this is our last gasp of presumably a fiscal yes yeah mm -hmm. year recording of the the revenue of this thing so whatever we can get is good um mm. but that's super interesting um 
I hadn't quite clocked that Ubisoft had like chosen Epic. I just knew that they had given up on themselves. Yeah, I, I did. I hadn't realized that either. Um, nice. So we might talk about this game, you know, in the future yeah. as well if we get a chance yeah. to play the, uh, the the full sort of experience. Um, so maybe one to return to. Um, but the other one I want to talk about, the other game which has taken up most of my time, um, is Immortality. Ooh. And it's uh, just coming out on... It's, again, a game from last year, maybe the year yeah. before. Um, but uh, it's coming out on PS5, so I very kindly got a code um, for, the, for the PS5 version. And it is not quite what I expected, but in a, in a very good way, let's say. Oh, um, I, I did try Immortality um, last year on my mobile. Um, and oh, didn't God. like the way that you controlled things. So no. for, for, for people yeah. who don't know, Immortality, uh, much like many of Sam Barlow's games, is a narrative game where you are... Um, and it's not quite like her story, but um, you're scrubbing through video clips. Um, and you're scrubbing through video clips centred around three unreleased films that an actress has starred in um, uh, marissa marcel i think her name is and the kind of the game sets you up in the vein of you know what has happened to marissa marcel she's disappeared from you know public life scrub through these sort of film clips and things to try and find this out and i started this up with kim Kim loves a, you know, oh, great. kind of a, 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 not necessarily a choices kind of game, but a, like a bit of a mystery and that sort of stuff. And you, you guys played the um, one of the um, Man of Medan. Um, you no, know. we haven't. You, have no, we played, played one the, the one we played together was um, the, God, what's the name called. It was one by Super Giant. Uh, uh, not super giant, super massive. Not until dawn, but it was the one that you control on mobile, which I will never right. remember that, the name of for that. Yeah. When when PS4 was it, right that's in that kind of was, that, mobile controller sort of space, um, mm. that's the one that we played together, which she which she enjoyed, um, mm -hmm. uh, um, and we thought cool, we, we we'll enjoy this. And after about thirty minutes, she's like, Nah, I don't get it. I'm not really I'm not really following. You know, the mm. the the clips aren't you know you don't uh, find them sequentially um part of my issue with immortality is you don't seem to and when you do well, i suppose to explain you you basically get one video clip you scrub through it you can go into kind of a uh, discovery mode i can't remember exactly what that's called but and then you click on something within the screen and it will find a clip which has something like that or something similar in and you right. unlock clips by doing that over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. So clicking on mm -hmm. actors or people's faces will bring up another scene that they are in or clicking on clapperboards. So a lot of this shows sort of the film scene and mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily just show you the scene. It shows the clapperboard. It shows them maybe talking before or afterwards. It's got interviews. It's got, for one of the films, they do like little behind the scenes sort of videos on a handheld camera and, and things like this. So you're going through all of these discovering items or people or things that might mm. link you to other other clips and my biggest issue with immortality is i cannot figure out or it doesn't seem to have any uh, uh, uh method to this so i like click on a character and it's like cool here's another scene with the character and i'm like okay cool fine mm -hmm. Uh, well there's a there's something in the background there's an interesting statue i wonder if because this is an interesting scene has that statue been in a different scene i click on the statue and it brings me up in a scene with a completely different statue but is is classified as statue it's oh. not the same one it doesn't unlock more of that sequence of the film so this is like early internet using tagging but the tags yeah. were like non-specific and too big yeah. yes like metadata but not yes yeah yes Sorry, that's but it's thinking. it's and it's i don't know i i because it very thing. much at the start comes up saying it's this method of um searching for things and looking through clips and stuff which is something i i'm unfamiliar with it could have been anything could have told me it was anything mm -hmm. and i would just go okay fine that's that's okay. how it is um but it took me about an hour of playing before i realized the whole 
control pad was vibrating at certain parts during these mm -hmm. clips and wanted me I, to look at other things and discover so the, the kind I, of the hidden parts of the scenes. I knew learned about this because I heard people reviewing this and two people had vastly different interpretations of the game because one was playing a controller and one was playing on a non-haptic feedback device. Mm. Mm -hmm. And they were like, wait, what? There's a thing? Yeah. Um, so I find this super interesting because you were actually on the haptic feedback device, but it wasn't, like, clicking. Mm. So well, you, you had the, like, negative experience of the one, like, so I thought this was like, oh, you just need to play this on the controller. But you, without being given the heads up, had the same experience of, what the fuck? Oh, I've I've missed an entire vector of this game. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I well think... it, it does take a while. I think that's just the natural uh, progression of the game. That, um, mm. it, it doesn't want you to realize that, uh, first and foremost. It may even obscure that. It may even, maybe there's something built into it where it doesn't reveal that and the first couple times you watch that exact scene um i'm not sure but it took it took me about probably about the similar amount of time to be i knew that the controller was rumbling but i just didn't know the reason for it yes and yeah. then it's finding out um what you can do with the you know scrubbing and with the controls mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to so this manipulate is why the that, person but... who didn't even have that feedback yeah like, that's why i told clearly... them two years ago it was like don't play it on yes uh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah absolutely absolutely and you, i use a control i thought okay it's 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 giving me something called cool. pause it it's vibrating, pause it, and it must be yeah. click on this person or click on this item or click on this object mm. to take me to another scene. Maybe that's the way that it does mm -hmm. it. And, and you know, not to... Well, I don't want to spoil Immortality. It's a spoiler two-year-old game um, for mm. people too much. But there are uh, uh, um, kind of scenes within scenes. And I think that is done exceptionally well. I think mm -hmm. that is such a an amazing feature to have baked into this game because this could have yeah. been a, just a straight up uh, um, kind of sequel to her story and just a similarish kind of thing but in a slightly different vein you know piecing together film clips rather than interviews and 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 that sort of stuff but the the kind of the world that lives beneath those clips is is both really interesting to try and mm -hmm. understand the motivations and the characters and all of that sort of stuff but i think it's really like it, it just as a as a again starting to uncover and i must have over a hundred film clips uh, um now Already unlocked, yeah. but it, it trying to run through them and understand the story that's kind of beneath the making of the films and the films themselves and the scenes and the or mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the um just a, a, a mirroring of the characters and this under story and those characters to what's going on in the films themselves and yeah. the storylines of those films just works very very well like this is this is written so phenomenally mm. once you start to understand <laughs> that there's this extra layer to this <laughs> game rather than oh it's just some films that i'm just kind of scrubbing yeah. through yeah, I, I have way more respect for this game than I actually like it. Um, <laughs> that, initial, <laughs> that initial reveal was like, you know, um, very striking and will live in my memory. Mm. But as I, I have way more respect for like the, the technical aspects of like, you know, editing that footage yeah. together and um, mm. the cinematography and the attention to detail and the fact that these films, you, you could be convinced that they are films from like the 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 sixties and the seventies mm. um and um, the nineties or whatever right, yeah funny. yeah it, it's insane um the kind of like uh underlying meta story and that as I say I won't spoil it, but it's more to do with heady philosophical you know concepts and mm. you know how people view art and stuff didn't care for it um so it was just like, yeah, I have way more respect for it on a technical point of view and like cinematography than I ever did for the story. Sure. Um, mm. But yeah, it, 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 that's why it's like it's overall a very impressive package. It just didn't sew everything up together for me um, in the end because, um, you know, this is something that people, that whatever message they were trying to convey, people will take their own spin away from it and take yeah. their own. Uh, mm you know meanings from it whereas i'm just like 
Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? What are you trying to tell me? Um, maybe I'm just not sophisticated enough, but it's like, that's where that game let me down. Sure. Um, but everything else is, is just, is just so well done and the quality and the, the, the technical feat that is that game. It's, it, it's incredible. But, um, if you're not into any of those things, like I'm not someone who's massively enamored by like different cinematography but i could respect it mm, and i could mm. resp- i know nothing about editing <laughs> but it's like i can respect it but if you're not into those things and you are a passive viewer like you know kim is you're not even getting the haptic feedback of the controller yes. yeah, yeah i could see why yeah. you'd fall off it immediately yeah absolutely um, so yeah yeah i think if she'd have been controlling it um you know, she might have been a bit more invested in, in what yeah. was going on. Um, because as soon as I worked that out, as soon as I understood the, the mechanic and and that there was this extra layer to it, uh, suddenly the 50 scenes or 20 to 30 mm-hmm. scenes that I'd unlocked, I'm like, oh, I now have to go back into every single scene. And I'm looking yeah. at this game completely differently yeah. to how I was. And now I'm favoriting... I'm like, because you can... On the, on the, the kind of the board of where you can see just a, an image of each of those clips and it lays them out like i'm just like oh well I, why am i you know they're just there fine mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. you can set them in a date that they were filmed or in chronological order to this or, or, or scene order let's say mm-hmm. and some of that fills in between uh, um you know the actual scene itself that's being filmed or an auditioned version or an early storyboarding kind of version of these films but yeah. uh, of the scenes and it, it, it fills that out really, really nicely. But you can favorite clips and, and look at different, look at the things that you've clicked on in all of those yeah, clips yeah. as well to see exactly what you're kind of tracking through um, to be able to go back in and scrub through stuff. I just, it, it, it's that, it's the idea again that I then got several hours through mm-hmm. and mm. some scenes you do the mechanic or you you kind of uh, um, you figure out what the mechanic is, and you do it, and it just switches into maybe a scene that's within it. But actually, mm-hmm. you can some of them where you might see a bit of a, a like an, an over image that just kind of like yes. comes over the top of the scene as as it's kind of playing out. Mm-hmm. You can actually track that, and you can slow it right down, or you can speed it up, and you can reverse it really slow mm-hmm. or reverse it really fast. And that again changes the quality of the image coming through, and then that might trigger another scene that, that kind yeah. of kicks in. Yeah. So there's lots of sort of nuance as well within each of those bits and how you actually find all of these things. Whether you think, oh, this is just the, it, it's not really anything. You know, one scene mm-hmm. was just a character dancing, and yeah. dancing for like five yeah. minutes. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. In a very mad looking way. Yes. Um, yeah. But. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I, I I completely forgot to. Uh, uh, well, it's been two years, but I completely forgot oh. how like a lot of the mysteries in that game are actually to do with the films that you are piecing together, like just figuring out the actual plot of those. Yes, films. yeah. Um, that was more interesting to me, okay. <laughs> especially the one that looked like a really low budget '90s film. <laughs> was uh, figuring those out was like more of a accomplishment and felt i mean they're really dumb storylines yeah. but it's like even figuring that out was a uh, was satisfying and a bit more satisfying than the the overall mystery else mm, um, okay yeah, yeah it's just yeah that 90s one with like the bad wigs it's just so <laughs> good it's just like so of its time it's just like yes this, this is a film that came out in 1996 and that would have starred uh, i don't know sarah michelle geller or something yes absolutely <laughs> yes completely completely <laughs> yeah. um it's I, I think it's it's acted very well as mm-hmm. well it's yeah. it's the kind of yeah. yeah and but there it, it's just that weird like you're okay you're you're acting but you're playing an actor acting a character mm-hmm. so there needs to be a you know you can't just play that character you have to be the actor being the character you know and yes. embody the yeah. embody the actor embody the character that you're playing then playing another character and i think a lot of that works very very well because there, yeah, there's a yeah, there's a totally lot of like tonal shift between the the uh, sort of the cast 
sort of when they're you know when they're acting versus when they're kind of talking about the characters or just talking between themselves or maybe uh, um, kind of discussing the scene and those kinds of stuff that you know you you feel that those people they are actors but that, that they are actors in that time and place embodying yeah, they completely that, role sell and that it. sort of stuff yeah, yeah yeah they completely sell it and yeah that is a stat another standout of the game the acting is fantastic so um yeah that goes a long way um yeah it's 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 something that I wanted to like more. Um, mm. It just didn't land it for me. Same mm. with um, Telling Lies. Um, that didn't, you know, land it. But I think even her story, you know, you could argue that it's like uh, the, the actual what comes before, like the big reveal, so to speak, is the satisfying part of it and the bit that is, you know, technically impressive So and, and novel. So... Yeah, it's um, it's it's a game I'll never forget, but it's mm. it, it didn't crack like my top ten that year or or, or anything. Just just because, oh, it, it just needed to do a bit more to sew things together. It's like yeah, it's more more the why. Why am I doing this? Yeah, I, I just yeah, don't yeah. feel like it. It 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 nailed that purpose for me personally. But as I say, I'm not mm. someone who will phys- philosophically debate art well i, <laughs> I think just, i'll just watch it and let it go into my mm, eyeballs and that's I, it. I think yeah. there could have been especially if you're you know if you're if you've uncovered a lot of the scenes um and and the, sort of the the story beneath them and actually mm-hmm. how the uh, kind of the characters translate through this kind of timeline and then the kind of not necessarily the ending but I've had I've had mm. an ending and I've rolled credits, but there's actually more endings oh, okay. to this as well. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But the one that that kicked in for me it gives a big suggestion, and I think if they'd had or if the start of this had made more out of you're this person going through these clips because you have to do it for this reason, or they've mm-hmm. mysteriously turned up because you're a filmographer or some shit like that, if they've mm-hmm. given you a little bit more impetus as to why you're yeah. doing it at the start of the game those impacts would have been just that little bit bigger um yeah so it's it, like the idea of when you you know there's loads of horror films and stuff where like you know a, a film mysteriously turns up and people watch it and suddenly they're haunted by yes. a fucking thing <laughs> and you know if if it had given a little bit more setup to yeah. why you are there and doing this i think that would have translated just that little bit better yeah um, for me yeah. for sure i need key stage two level goosebumps kind of <laughs> plot uh, to, to understand <laughs> what was going on <laughs> so, yeah. oh good yeah. good and it, it, it i i think it's i don't know whether it's got the tag of being like a horror but i did it's not really there isn't sort of any um it's, it's no, like a mystery it's, it's more un- like a drama it's unsettling it? like it's definitely unsettling um there are moments of that are quite you know uh, shocking as well yeah like when you're not expecting it as well mm. but, but it's yeah it's it it verges on the very safe edge of horror but it's, yes yeah, you wouldn't categorize it as a horror game for sure but um, mm. Mm. there are parts where it's like and you know i was i think i started I, I think i started it like the day it came out or something really like that because it was on game pass yeah, yes. and I was like, yeah, yeah friday you know chill out play this and it was like you know late at night and it's like well, this is getting a bit spooky, <laughs> <You know? laughs> because you, at that point you don't know what the what's going on. Mm. You don't know what the reveal is, and you you know you don't know how far that rabbit hole is going to go. And stuff Absolutely, like that. yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, yeah. It, that uh, initial reveal of the game's mechanics is 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 exceptional. Yeah, yeah, and it, it, I won't sort of again not trying to spoil too much, but I think for me it happened on quite a pivotal scene. Um, so was I've gone... it a sex scene? No, it wasn't a sex scene. No, <laughs> okay. um... you weren't scrubbing through the sex scene. Ooh, <laughs> no. let me have a look at that. No, no, it was one with a. It was a scene towards the end of the first film, um, right. with a with a tree and a big painted kind of background, yeah. um, and that that scene. And suddenly, when it's exactly switched, I'm that. like, mm-hmm. where have the characters gone? Mm-hmm. And then it sort of then that, that scene within sort of kicks off, and I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. Like for me, that was just like a. It was a big moment. It was a big sort of like yeah, mind blowing moment. It's so I'm like, seamless oh, as well. It is yeah. really seamless. Absolutely, you, it's like your eyes are doing tricks on you. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, very, very, 
well made, really, really well made. And I think, as I said, mm-hmm. it's not a, you know it's not the sequel to her story, but it's it's very much an evolution. Again, I haven't played Telling Lies either, so um, I, I don't know what that step up between those kinds of games are. But it does feel like similar to her story in terms of what you're doing and sequencing kind of clips and things like that. But mm-hmm. it just takes it to that next level yeah. completely. Yeah. Um, and it, it has got me thinking, oh, I should go back and play Telling Lies now. Maybe that is slightly more suited to me and Kim sitting down together and playing it. It's, it's, um, it's, that is also very well acted. And mm. um, I, I think that's where, yeah, I respect that game for its acting and, and the way it's, um, it, it's, you know, the, the things are spliced together and the um, presentation of it in terms of what the overall story was, again, it just let me down. Yeah, um, yeah. But, yeah, but, but yeah, see so yeah, how you get on with that. Um, mm. I, I'm glad to have experienced all these games, but, um, yeah, I don't think anything will hit, like, her story. Um, mm. Just because it was mm. novel at the time. You Absolutely. Know? Um, but, yeah, Immortality certainly has some very high highs. Um, so, mm. Yeah, yeah. Nice, good, good. Mm. Um, and that, that, I mean, that's it for me for games. Yeah. So. I'm really fascinated if when, when my first, uh, when I first discovered that mechanic, um, it would be nice if that was like, I don't know how the, the game would do it, but you know, if it, it could be like, oh, at the end, uh, this this is where you started. Or gave you some uh, stats. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, how many times you scrubbed through the sex scene? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many times you clicked on the tits just to see yeah. what the next scene with tits yeah. in takes you to? Yeah. yeah. Worst. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, that would be a 10 out of 10 game. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, there are a lot of, not sex scenes necessarily, yeah. but there is a lot of kind of nudity. And I, you know, it's trying mm-hmm. again to sort of tell that story. You know, the first film had a kind of slightly aging director who was a little mm. bit horny. So, sure, <laughs> a lot of the characters are just kind of like naked for some of the film yeah. and that sort of stuff. And it gives a little bit of social commentary in that kind of yeah, sense yes. without delving too much mm-hmm. into that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. But mm-hmm. it's kind of like, why is she naked? Well, okay. <laughs> and then you uncover a scene later on where she's in, they're, they're screen testing dresses. And the director's like, no, I don't like any of these, basically. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, that's why she's naked. Sure, fine. Because <laughs> the director was a perv rather than it being yeah. any you know, reason, really. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting in that sort of sense as well to see the sort of the sensibilities. And, they've, and as you say, Lucy, they've captured kind of the era that these films have been made in very, very well, both in mm-hmm. terms of the, especially on the first film where it's in a 4-3 format. Yes. as well and all of the films yeah. change their 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 ratio formats mm-hmm. very oh, slightly be. based upon when they've kind of come out and obviously uh, mm-hmm. the, the film That's, grain and I mean, stuff like that works very, yeah, very well Minsky. It's really good yeah. Immersion. Yeah. oh yeah yeah you, you're you're fully convinced that these are actually films mm. <laughs> that didn't didn't come out so yeah. yeah films that aren't films but are films yes films yeah. Are, but yeah they are films yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah. Cool. Uh, let's finish there for this week then. Um, but return and roll back round to beers. Um, Adol, did you have any further thoughts uh, on the beer after your palate maybe had acclimatized? Yeah, uh, a little more of the beery taste came out, but ultimately, it if they were going for ginger beer, it's notoriously not a super bitter flash beery taste, and they got that. Um, uh, I wish I could explain what these like crystalline like ginger packets are if you don't know what they are, but this definitely tastes just kind of like that, mm. and a bit maybe a bit less like a bit too much fluid, so it's a little a little weak on the ginger side. Like mm. the advantage of the packet is you can just like put less liquid, and then it can get yeah. burny. And so this is as a ginger beer, my favorite types of ginger beer. So what I think it makes a ginger beer versus a ginger ale alcoholic or not is ginger beers tend to be much more fiery right they, they have that ginger in it uh, this is more gingery than a like Schweppes ginger ale but not by a lot mm, mm. um and it just it's just kind of like a tepid thing and the it it's the cardinal sin of flavored beer where it's 
there's not enough beer taste. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So there was an interesting thing I noticed with the slight like um, melon aftertaste, but that's only because I was just looking for something. But it was also didn't jive with the thing it wanted to be, let alone the beer it's supposed to be. If that makes sense? Like yeah, the, yeah. So Seems just, like it just, went middle of the road and didn't do either thing. Yeah, really like well. if you like, wanted give me a beer or give me a ginger beer. <laughs> been a f- overload me with ginger. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you wanted to be a beer that evoked ginger beer, you need to give me beer, basically. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Fair. Yeah, um, so, so, no, so no ghost friend for me. <laughs> and was it was it a Guaylo beer in collaboration with Brew York or a Brew York beer in collaboration with Guaylo? Uh, I believe it's a uh, Guaylo in collaboration with Brew York. Right. Okay. Okay. So it, I, it, if only because like, yeah. Look at the label. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Uh, Brew York is there. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, like I didn't. I didn't realize there was a collab until I was reading the label to try and find where. Um, so I think what it is is it's it's more like a brewed by, but less. Oh, of a it's like a contract input. brew sort of. So, they, so it's called a collaboration between Brewer, Brew York and Wilo Beer, but it's brewed by Brew York, um, right. in New York, okay. obviously. Um, and then when you sort of read all the flavor text, I'm getting pretty straightforward. It's our take on the classic blah 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 blah. Like it just feels like this is a light collaboration, if that. Mm. But more brewed of a, at Brew York, but it's a Guaylo beer. Yeah. Sorry, it's brewed at Brew York, but it's a Guaylo beer. Yeah, in collaboration. Exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Fine. Interesting. Yes. Yes. Mm. Um, for me, then. The collaboration, which I assume is brewed at New Bristol Brewery, it's very much fashioned as a New Bristol Brewery beer, with all of their branding and and text and the way that they lay out their beers. Um, yes, brewed and canned in the UK by New Bristol Brewery, but it does taste like a vault seat beer. It, it's got that softness, it's got that level of kind of flavour to it, that balance between those flavours uh, um, that just works very, very, very well. And it isn't too sour either. It is mm. like a, just a lovely, fruity, very medium-bodied uh, um, beer uh, with that little bit of sourness, that little bit of zestiness, a touch, only a touch of kind of bitter zestiness towards the end uh, uh, of it. Um, it's lovely, lovely combination of flavours. Uh, um, this is this is really nice. Uh, and I wasn't expecting, like, you know, when you see, like, meringue and lemon curd, I, it's not what I expected, um, kind of at all from this beer. I, I thought, and again with Vault City, they do push the boat out occasionally on some beers, and I'm thinking, oh shit, is, is this going to be slightly gloopy? Is it going to be a little yeah. bit chewy? Is it is it going to go that kind of end of things with the mm. sort of the name to it? So I'm very, very, uh, um, very pleasantly surprised by the kind of the restraint um, that is in this beer, but just how flavorful and good that it is as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah. finally, putty, Lucy. Yeah, it's. I'm going to keep this short because this is. I've still got like. Wow. Uh, yeah. A third of a glass left, and I don't know. How I'm going to finish it. It has <laughs> like just like packed up my intestines like putty, <laughs> and it's just like. Uh, I might just neck it and then just collapse. Yeah. I am flagging. So <laughs> it's very nice. And that's it. That's fair. That's fair. I'm sorry. Listen. No, not at all. It's, not cool. it's all good. Go pick Given it up. that you have you five can. more to get through. <laughs> yeah, but that'll hopefully be on a day when I'm feeling a bit uh, less tired. A yeah. More fresh and peppy. Yeah. Maybe a over the weekend or something. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. always struck me as like a like a 3 p.m. on any any day, any time of the year because it's so strong that it kind of brings that springy, summery yeah. hit to yeah. you. What an hour it would, I'm just already tired before. Or like 9 p.m. <laughs> after a long, sluggy day, yeah. do you want to be pepped? No, but it will certainly induce sleep very quickly. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good for that. Perfect, yeah. perfect. Let's wrap up incredibly quickly then. Um, if you want to talk to us about <laughs> games and beers, we're at Tanked Up Cast on all of the socials. You can join us on our Discord. Uh, channel uh, group as well just hit one of us up um, or hit up 
uh, uh, tanked up on the socials or out of lives net as well. Uh, I'm at Nova underscore 47. Adele is. And at the Omnio. And Lucy is. Going to bed. (laughs) (laughs) And you should very much go to outoflives.net as well to see our beautiful faces and the beers that we have drank um, or our YouTube page, channel, thing, place as well. Uh, If you are an audio listener, great thanks uh rate review us on your podcast service of choice because it's always very very helpful yeah i've run out of steam as well um (laughs) thanks for joining us we've been tanked up goodbye bye no (laughs) (laughs) www.outoflives.net